Hello and welcome to a Karis how-to hydrography video. Today we'll be talking about creating a cube surface using Karis hips and sips. Now cube stands for combined uncertainty and bathymetry estimator. In hips and sips the cube surface can be used as a cleaning tool in the workflow or as an end product for bathymetric product creation such as soundings and contours. The cube algorithm has been designed to assist hydrographers to help improve acquisition to processing ratios, particularly with multi-beam data, which can often contain noise and erroneous soundings. In cube surface creation, nodes are created at the desired resolution of the surface, for example, one meter, two meter, depending on the depth of the surface. Soundings are then weighted and contribute to the nodes based on their total propagated uncertainty values, or TPU, as well as their distance from the node. It is quite similar to the uncertainty method of surface creation in HIPS, however CUBE allows for multiple depth estimates to exist at a single node. Disambiguation is then used to select which hypothesis is most correct. In order to create a CUBE surface, we must first define TPU values in our vessel file. So I have a project open in HIPS and SIPS from our training data. So if I go to the project tab and click the vessel, a really easy way to get into editing this vessel is to highlight the vessel and go into the vessel editor. This will automatically load that vessel up in the vessel editor window. Now if we haven't already done so, we must first configure our active sensors under edit, active sensors, or alternatively this button on the toolbar and we must ensure that TPU values has been checked. If we go down to our section here on TPU values, we must first define a date as timestamps are very important in HIPS vessel files. There are two sections to fill out in the TPU section. The first of these is the offset section where we define the relationship between the sensors. In other words, the direct measurements between the motion sensor and the transducer, shown as MIU to transducer, and also the navigation to the transducer, so the GPS and the transducer. In comparison, other sections of the vessel file contain measurements in relation to a reference point, rather than directly between the sensors. Next, in the standard deviation field of the TPU section, the user is required to enter the sensor accuracies at one sigma, or 68% confidence level. The accuracies can be obtained from the manufacturer of the sensors. Units for each sensor uncertainty will depend on that type of sensor. For example, navigation, the uncertainties are in meters, and pitch, the uncertainty are in degrees. To assist users in setting up the TPU section of their vessel file, Karis has set up a web page. So if we open up a browser and we type in the URL of www.karis.com slash TPU, this will take us to the Total Propagated Uncertainty computation page. So this page contains accuracies for most sensors and the subsequent value that needs to be entered into the HIPS vessel file. So for example, if we look at navigation, we can see the various manufacturers, their different models of sensors, and their different values. So here we can see that using an Aplanix POSIM V320 in differential GPS mode, we are required to enter in a HIPS value of 2.0 in the uncertainty section. We also have the same for gyro and heading, heave sensors, and roll and pitch sensors. So going back to our vessel file, also entered in the standard deviation section is the standard deviation of the timestamps in seconds and also of the XYZ measurements of the offsets. If the offsets have been measured accurately, for example with a total station, these values will be quite low. If using a more crude form of measurement, such as a tape measure, the user would want to enter higher values. Once the TPU values have been configured in the vessel file, we can compute the TPU values for each sounding. So going back into HIPS and HIPS, HIPS and SIPS, if we select a line and we go process compute TPU, this will bring up the compute TPU dialog. 
Now please note that if sound velocity correction is going to be applied to the data, compute TPU must be performed after the sound velocity correction. Whether it is computed before or after the merge process will depend on the user's individual workflow. When TPU is computed, it is always done on the observed depths, so tide and draft offsets will not affect the values. Here in the Compute TPU dialog, the user must also enter the uncertainty values for the tide measurement and the sound speed values. To save time, TPU has already been computed on this data set. So to examine TPU values for a line, we'll select one of the lines and open up our swath editor. Here we can select a couple of pings and we can right click and go query or alternatively we could have just hit the Q button. So by query, in the selection window you will now see that we have columns for the depth TPU of our sounding and the horizontal TPU of our sounding. Now it's important to note that TPU values are calculated based on no knowledge of what is a good sounding. So for example, a spike may have better TPU values than a good sounding just because it is closer to the transducer head. Now TPU values will be greater in deeper waters and also when looking at this data, sounding towards the edge of the swath have larger TPU values than those close to nadir. So in the profile window, if we look at our soundings in the middle here, we can see we have depth TPU values of 0.114 and on the outer edge of the swath, our depth TPU values are getting to nearly one, a quarter of a metre. Now, after we've computed TPU and we've also loaded, tied and merged our data, we're now able to compute a cube base surface. To do this, we must define a field sheet for the extents of the data. So if we go process, new field sheet, we can type in a name of test, set our coordinate system, I'll just use the extents of the window for my field sheet and go finish. So you can see that this has created our field sheet. So to create a surface, we'll go to our layers window, we'll right click on our field sheet and we'll go new base surface. We enter a name for our base surface, so cube 50 centimetres. We'll go to next, resolution of half a metre and we'll pick a surface type of cube. Go to next. We can now define if we want to limit our soundings to an IHO S44 order, which in this case we can use special order, and also whether we want some additional attributes such as the shoal and deep layers computed. In the final step, we can select our disambiguation method. So density will select the hypothesis that has the most number of soundings contributing to it. Locale, we'll look at the values of the surrounding hypotheses in determining which hypotheses should be selected. And density and locale is a combination of the two methods. Now once again, to save time, this has already been computed. So we can go File, Open Field Sheets, and I'll open my existing field sheet. Hips Training. And here you can see I have my cube 50 centimeter surface already computed and there it is displayed in my window. I currently have the depth layer displayed, but there are also a number of other layers which will be discussed in another video. If you have any more questions or would like more information, please go to our website at www.caris.com or alternatively, send through an email to info at Thank you.